Hello everybody, Torgal here, and welcome back to Satisfactory. Today, we got lots to do, okay? We are gonna move into this building. Um, we're gonna have to set up all the production for, you know, from iron plates all the way up to modular frames. What is the highest stuff that we can make right now? Um, da -da. Right here, the automatic wiring. Um, we're not gonna do everything in the book, but everything that we need to send this thing up so we unlock five and six. Okay, so I just want to recap here real quick. Over here, this entire building is only to make iron ingots. This one is to make copper ingots. Over here, we have chitarium. Steel is back behind that sign right there. And concrete all the way. We can see that building from here. And everything comes down together here. This is that um, building where all the ingots, the copper and the iron and everything comes back right there. And it goes into the building. A little bit of it is running. I'll show you guys because a little bit of testing and and trying to figure out a setup for a module. I want to make many of them today. But I'm up here to show you guys this building right here. I built this between episodes a while ago. And just like everything else, Iron FE26, Copper CU29. I put label on here, which is not a periodic table, but I thought it was funny. I'm going to give you a second to figure out what this means. The AWSM. Awesome. <laughs> uh, this building is full with awesome things. I show you guys when I get down there because I wanted to have a central area where we can void things, right? Overflow to make points and so on. And you guys see down here, we got a little something going on. We have iron plates and gunpowder going in um, that I set up. Like I said, I made some test modules to figure out how I want to set everything up. Um, the design and i'm just pumping them in there because i don't need it you know the resources are endless so but everything that we're gonna do from here on out until we are up into the next area that was that was the goal tier one through four i wanted to keep all in our grasslands here and everything run with conveyors no trains or anything right once we go out of the grasslands don't remember don't forget um right here if we get outside of this area we're gonna have to start using trains or trucks in order to unlock 5 and 6, we need 500 smart plating, 500 versatile framework, and 100 automated wiring. Now, obviously, we only need these for this uh, space elevator. So there's no reason to always have this automated, right? But the components that we need for that, right? Like the reinforced plates, the rotors, and then on this one, we need um, machine frames. I think that's what it's called. And this one, we need statters. So all of these things need to be automated, right? All right, I'm on top of this awesome building now. Up there is where I just had the first take, and then we ran over to the space elevator. This is what it looks like. There is 12 of these awesome sinks in here. And I left them open because they're so darn tall that I would have had to come even higher up just to close it up. And I'm like, why not? Let's leave it open, right? Not really sure what's with these... I don't know what these are supposed to be. I was wondering when I set this up. Because they could be two things. They could be a radar dish, or they could also be like a... Like they're harvesting the sun or something, and then concentrating it and burning it. You know what I mean? If that makes any sense? Like this is capturing it and then shooting out? I'm not sure what it is, but whatever. So yeah, this is what it looks like from up here. And then we can see all the belts down here in action. There's 12 of them coming in. And let me just run. Actually, let's just jump down right here. Bam. No fall damage. Bam. There we go. And come around the front so you guys can see where the belts are coming in. And this one right here, I think I used a while ago when I built this building and then haven't. But over here, we got iron plates and the... Uh, is it gunpowder or black powder? I can never remember. What is this called? This is black powder. Okay. Going in there and getting voided right now. Um, let me just check real quick. I totally forgot. Uh, I want to know if we have any more tickets. I think I have 50 something left in storage. And there are three more right now. You know what? Let's go ahead and take these. Just because I wanted to show you guys something. I mean, I emptied my inventory a minute ago. This is the second take. So let me run back inside. You guys know I like my mods, right? Oh yeah, I installed uh, three more mods. One of them is called the Flags mod. Um, that gives you all kinds of different flags and signs and so on. 
And one of them is this round sign right here. I just thought it's cool in our main storage area. There's another one that I wanted to show you here. I have them all over the place, like on the iron building, above the doors now, and the copper, and so on. And then over here as well, you know, it just shows vehicles. Why not? And then this right here is so cool. I love this. I can't wait until we get the truck. I like this vehicle. It's a lot of fun. Um, and, oh yeah, let me just show you here. These things, this is all pre-in pre, pre in here. Pre-comes with it. Levels, all kinds of signs, you know. It makes sense. Things that you want to show around the, the factory. And I like this one down here. You can even set up a road network. How cool is this? And we might use this in the future. I like it. Okay, the other mod is Hypertubes. Yes, I, I I wanted to get around quicker, like if I need to get over to the coal and stuff, right? So right here, this is a normal speed Hypertube, right? No. And you see how much we slowed down on that little kink right there. So in order to go long distances, you would have to set up these cannons, right? Where you set up multiple of these entrances in a row, like 10, 12, 15... To get some decent speed or you can install a mod called hyper boosters that's what it's called and i like that a lot i unlocked this one here it's the hyper booster mk1 it's a little bit pricey so i i can't wait to automate this because handcrafting this sucks but there's also an mk2 i think this one is five times the boost and then the mk2 is 15 times the boost of course the electricity usage goes up but check it out how fast we are with this now yeah. See, this this is what I like. I think it should be built into the base game. Like, different uh, tiers of these hyper tubes. Okay? I, I, I really think so. Uh, you gotta be careful, though, because whenever you get to an end, you always have to put these rails. If I did not have this rail or this rail, I would go straight into the next one. <laughs> okay, let's go back. And then the last mod I installed... Uh, which one? Yes, a decoration mod. Well, there's two that are called decoration. One you guys already know, that's the letters and signs. Like this right here, this sign and the fix-it sign. That's called decorations, I think. And then there's the decorations mod, which adds nothing but existing items from the game already. Trees, rocks, mushrooms, flowers, bushes, and all that stuff. And I put some in the Dogo area just to decorate a little bit more. And I put some around here. Right, wow, my cat just scared the... Just scared me. Man, just jumped right off the desk next to me. Um, right, um, let me just show you here all the things that you have with it. Right here, decoration mod. You know, all the, do you want a tree? Bam. Oh, I don't have any materials on me. I can't afford it. What does it take? Oh yeah, plant stuff. But, you know, a banana tree or um, anything. Um, you even have the big rocks here, which, you know, might be cool if you, if you have the right place like these Look at this. You can put entire arches and stuff around. What oh, this one we could actually build? Bam, there it is. You want it? There you go. Now we got a weird thing. Looks like a... This looks like a... An ant leg or something. Okay. But anyway, so that's here too. But now, let's get started. So, I... You guys remember end of last episode we were going through all the things that need to be automated and I set up a storage system for it. I wanted this to be ready. This took me quite some time to figure out how to do it. And this all runs on the smart splitters that we recently unlocked. Right there. Okay. Um, again, pain in the butt to um, craft by hand all the materials, but I had to. And I have tons and tons of storage boxes ready. The right side is almost all completely empty besides the end over here. There's a couple of them. You guys see there's no conveyor belt coming in the ground because they have multiple items. Once we can make the programmable splitter, then I can put those here for multi-items, right? So, for example, right now in this one, we have parts that I picked up from um, crashed crash sites, right? Like these computers um, and other stuff that's just, I don't have any, I'm not using. Let's just say it like that. And this one here holds all the plant material and also my other tickets. Only a f Oh, that's where my tickets are. I knew I had a hundred. There's 42 right here. And there is 57 right here and three that we just took out. I knew that they were somewhere. Okay, so I just put them in multiple boxes. Right, plant material and other stuff that I don't need. And then this one here has 
um, paint, saw, and what is this called again? Biofuel. Yes. But now let me show you guys the, the way it works. We have a drop-off chest right here. And then it goes through the entire line down this way and back up this way. And if it doesn't find space anywhere, it goes into the overflow right here, which is currently has a bunch of stuff in it, right? The way it works is actually very simple once, once I figured it out. Okay, this is the drop-off. It comes into this smart splitter. And every smart splitter is set up the same way. It splits off the item I want to store in here. And if this one is full, the overflow of this item goes out the left and then goes into a merger, which merges with the one that goes straight through. So the items go back on the belt and then get split again, overflow this way and merge it together. And the way it looks in the actual smart splitter is to the right, I have the iron plates. To the left, I say overflow. What overflow means is that anything that is assigned to the splitter here, which in this currently is iron plates, if that is full, then the overflow will go to the other side. In the center, I send any undefined. If I don't do this here, the overflow to the left and merge back in, everything will come to a halt if the iron is full, because the iron wants to go to the right, and it is not undefined, so it can't go straight. Right, so it would stop. So that's how this works. And it goes all the way down and around the same way. And you guys see right here, I already tied in the concrete. Everything is gonna come in from the top, from the automations. This right here is only for me to drop off, to empty my inventory if I don't wanna hold on to anything. Right, I just, I got a lot of crap in my inventory from exploring whatever, I just wanna drop it off. All right, so now let's see this in action. I just don't wanna drop off my up here okay so we come here and then i say store all bam and then let's come back here and you guys see this is actually perfect because this one is full so these are the steel and they you can't see them well i guess you can't see them let me get rid of this so we can see better let me just get out of here so i have an empty hand and it will go straight all the way down here and you guys see it can't go to the right because this box is full so it goes into the overflow to the left, merges back on the belt and goes all the way around, as you guys can see up there, where it crosses over. And then back down this line, all the way. And these right here that don't have anything assigned, the way I set them here is right none. And then you can see overflow to the left, so I don't need to set this. So if I have a new item later that I want to start storing, all I need to do is set it up in one splitter and be done with it. Okay, and then all the way on the bottom here, you guys see there is the there's the steel parts and they are going into the overflow chest because there's no room. So, and then from here, I can take the items here. So let's say I don't need the sulfur. I don't need the limestone. I don't, I'm not going to keep the iron. I'm not going to keep the copper and I'm not going to need the coal. Okay, the rest of the stuff like the bauxite. I still need to research Sam or I'm not going to throw away and the other stuff I want to keep as well. But these items I want to throw away. I set up a awesome box over here and that is the one on to the right. Okay, now I remember. Okay, and we put this in here and it goes bye bye and makes me points. It goes up there and it goes all the way to the end of the building out into the awesome sink building. So this is the storage system for now. Maybe in the future it's going to be reworked. Definitely when we get the programmable splitters. Right, so I can set up the boxes here in the end. Now it is time to build something. Yes, it is time to fill this. I filled my inventory with everything I can think of. And we're up on the second floor. And this is one of the modules that I built off camera to figure out how I want to have it. Um, the idea was I wanted to have something that is easily easy to replicate. And you guys are going to see how easy it is to build. Um, there is no conveyors between the lifts the constructors uh, on the output and the input, the only conveyors are down here between the splitters and the mergers. That's it. Okay, it is super easy to build. So this works. It takes an entire iron belt, 240 per minute, and it makes 160 parts per minute of iron plates. Eight constructors, that's one module. And now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to build one of them with you guys, just in case you're wondering how I built it. 
And I'm not going to show it everything. I'm, I'm going to try to make this very, very smart when it comes to cutting. But the way we start is just place these um, gate walls around it. That's how I did it. So you can easily run conveyors in and out and you can look in, right? And you make this eight long. Okay, there is eight. And then we'll put the ceiling tiles in. A uh, ceiling. Foundations. All the way down and i am going to give myself an extra one here because i need to be able to get up there and actually um otherwise it's going to be hard to align these constructors properly so i'm just going to pull these foundations in here if i don't misclick a million times there we go now let's see if i can jump up there if you hold down sprint you can usually jump up yeah so that's perfect all right and then now i just gotta remember because i want this to be exactly the same the the feet of these things here this is just on the edge let's see if i can replicate that uh input is here yeah just like that i think i think this is centered yes i just i want to make sure yes okay so the front is the same with the front right here so just place all eight of those next to each other once you have the first one it's easy because you can just use the the green line in the middle to make sure you have it as aligned the same width and they all exactly one foundation wide. Okay, and then I figured while I'm up here, I'm going to set all of these to iron plate. And now we could really um, get rid of these foundations already because you don't need to come up here anymore. So let's just tear them down. You guys see, this is so fast to build. Okay, now comes the the the, the next part here. And this is going to be the splitters. Just make sure you turn them the right way. And then we have to make sure... I think it goes right there. You see, the white line is right where the wall is. And we just come down and place a splitter in the middle of each one of them. Alright, there we go. So we got this. And then you can already set up your... Um, mk1's right there and that is it right there okay so they get split up and now we can just tie oops wrong key binding right there what oh there we go and then we just need to connect these done okay and then the output is the reverse it's very simple these are Splitters, yes. Okay, I, I just set up this bar here, this extra bar for this recording to make sure I have it um, all on one bar instead of having to switch through. And then, just like the other thing, well, I'm going to tie them together first so it's going to be easier so I don't need to squeeze between the, the lifts. I mean, this has not even maybe five minutes and we almost have an entire module done. I love it. Okay. And then lift coming back down. These can also be MK1s because these machines only make 15 a minute. There we go. And that is it. Done. I mean, powering it up and getting the input and output. But the machines are done. This is it. I've been wrecking my brain a little bit. Trying to figure some things out. And let's go ahead and paint these here real quick. That color is... What is going on? Wait, well, is this my color? Oh, it is. Okay, it just looks a lot brighter. What's with the... What these blue dots? What's going on here? You guys see that? Anyways, sorry, sidetracked here. Um, trying to figure out, like, if I want to use this iron somewhere else. So I'm just going to put these here as a reminder that I can just go up to the next floor with them if I need them somewhere else because we don't need any of these eight for today. Or for now, I should say. These eight. So, second module is there. It's moved over that one foundation that I messed up. And I put in one over here for iron pipes. Let me switch my hand again. It's so annoying that they just don't let us unequip everything. This is going to be iron rods, sorry. And I just noticed that when I set up these machines, 
that they only need 15, half a build. So 120 for one module. So I'm going to put another module here. I was going to leave this room. So we have one 240 belt for rods, two modules. And we're going to get 240 rods out. It's 15 in, 15 out. So that works out nicely. And these two are set up. And then I looked at this recipe here. And I did a little bit of number crunching. Uh, sorry, right there, screws. This one right here, 50 a minute. Okay. We're going to set up 20 constructors, four modules of five machines each. And then one of the constructors on each machine is going to be underclocked to 84%. And that uses an entire belt of iron ingots, 240 of them. That's When I say an iron a belt of 240, I know the belts can hold 270, guys. But I'm only making 240, so... If everything runs at full speed, I will never have more than 240 coming in on a belt. So that's what I'm calculating with. But in order to split that between five modules, um, I had to consult the interwebs here for a one to five balancer. And I set this up here just to make sure that my, my thinking is actually correct. So I just set up a storage box here and just put an iron plates that I had on me, right? So they're constantly getting pumped out. Now, obviously, it's pumping these out with 270. There is no way for me to say 240. But 270 divided by 5 is 54. So each one of them, you guys see... Let me show from the other side so we see the numbers from the front. Shows me 54. So I'm splitting this up between the five modules. Right? And then each one of the modules gets one of these belts. And I'm going to do the overflow method. But I need to balance it beforehand. I don't want to overflow method through 20 constructors that's gonna take forever for the last one to get something so i rather split it up between five and then overflow for four constructors in each module and those oh, auto save give me a second here so my mouse can actually there we go and we're gonna put those over here five modules of four i'm gonna build them the same way but instead of eight just five right and i'm gonna have them over here so we're gonna have 960 screws from one belt and that is, I know that we probably going to need a lot of screws. Uh, I I remember that from season one. I needed so many screws. The reinforced plates need screws. I know that. And and I don't know what other recipes are going to need screws. Well, rotors. We're going to need... It makes four per minute. So I need a hundred screws per minute. I'm going to need a lot. So... I might set up two of those modules. So we're going to make, oh my God, uh, 1920 screws a minute. All right. I'm just underclocking the fourth one in each one of the modules and double checking my work because I made a boo boo just now. It's very late or very early in the morning, I should say, for me. I've been at this for 10 hours or something today. And I'm having a, uh, don't get me wrong, guys, I'm having a blast. I love figuring this out. And then especially when it comes to, you know, all the load balancers I've set up. So this is what this monstrosity looks like. This is just for screws, guys. There's 40 constructors. Wait, sorry, no. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 50 constructors. Um, yeah, 50 constructors. Eight modules of five each. Wait, 10 modules of five each. Wow, see? Math. Don't do math on camera. All right. Anyway, so this is what it looks like. Um, how can I show you guys this here best? Let's get up here on this constructor. Can I get up here, please? Somewhere. There we go. Can't wait to get the chit back. Okay. So this is where it comes in. And over here, it's mirrored the same spiel. It gets split, goes down, gets split again, goes down. Sorry, this is a merger. It gets split into a merger. And then goes into a splitter into three, right? And the first split right here goes into a merger, which passes it through to this splitter, which is the two other outlets. Which splits it goes back into this splitter, which feeds both of the mergers. Okay, I'm going to overlay a diagram. It's probably really badly explained by me, but it's not hard to figure out um, if you just follow this. This is a one to five lane balancer. And then the same over here. Um, it's definitely a lot easier to do these kind of things in Factoria than in 3D with ups and downs, but I still love doing it. And the first one goes in right here. Unfortunately, I could not make this straight. It was just 
this, if, if I did make this straight, then the other ones would have not been straight. So nothing I can do. We'll just have to live with that. And the other four are going down and then always splitting off, splitting off and so on into these other modules, right? And like I said, um, three of them are always at 100%. And the last one on each one of the models is 84%. So it's going to be 192 screws per belt, which are then coming out right here onto the belts and then going all the way down. These runs to oh, auto saving. I know I got the warning. It still catches me a surprise when I record. Sorry if I sound tired. I'm, I'm having fun. I don't want to go to bed. I want to, I want to kick this in and then the copper and stuff I'm going to do tomorrow. And then this all comes down here, all these screws. Each one of them is, like I said, 192. Wait. No, this is straight. Okay, it just looks crooked. All right, and let's come up here so I can show you this. And then out of five belts, we always have to... Can I get over there? Yes, there we go. A uh, little bit further. Uh, uh, right there. Okay, there we go. So the bottom one here on this and the bottom or the last one on there goes into... This splitter and this first one here goes into that and then i split it on the left and on the right so i get out four belts out of one right one two three four and they go into four mergers with the other four module so that is a five to four balancer and then they just go directly into storage chests and then from here you know wherever we're gonna go out the window upstairs wherever they're gonna be needed so there's gonna be 1920 screws a minute Okay, so I think we're going to kick in... Oh, did I... I didn't run the power on these yet. Okay, um, we're going to come from over there. Okay, let me go ahead and connect you to you. And then I just need to siphon off power from outside. That's what I'm doing. I could run it down from the inside, but this is so convenient right here. Where is a pole? right there so we're gonna run that into here like that i did that in the other corner for the screws as well okay and then from here we come to there and these are already connected so these should instantly start working now and we should start seeing rods coming here any second gonna be quick and this belt's not going to have that much, about 120. There we go. All right. And then after a minute, I'm going to be able to see if this shows 120 over there. This is just how I, you know, double checked that I actually did everything right. And then this one here should show 240. Okay. But this is the big one that I am looking forward to the most. Did I? I did hook this one up. Yeah, these chests over here should... Man, I... We're going to need a factory cart. These should all be full. Yes. Good. Now, of course, I do have plates again. I could use more MK1 stuff. All right. And now this one here, everything is powered already. That's why everything is yellow. And all I need to do is connect this one and this one. And then I want to see... I guess I'll climb up on this conveyor and watch it. Because this is, this is going to be epic. Um, well, at least for me. Uh, we need to connect... You and then uh, get over here. I love how we have like super jump and right there. And we're gonna climb up here and watch this. I'm most interested in our route. Wow, <laughs> I totally overstepped here. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Why can't I not get up here? This is where I spend most of my time. All right, there we go. This is what I want to see down here. If all of this looks about the same. Yeah, you guys can clearly see that that this uh, one to five balancer works. Same amount of ingots going down these belts. Same gaps. And over here too. Okay. And whoop, nice. And then we should start. Yep, there's the screws coming. Oh, let the madness begin. I need to hop over to the main merging area because I want to see that. That's going to be so cool looking. Seeing all the blue screws coming down. It's very rewarding when you get to this. You know, putting in all this work and all this time and then in the end seeing it all coming. 
Okay, there we go. Lots of blue coming. Mm. So when everything is fully running, each one of these belts should look full. I mean, they can hold 270. I know I'm, I'm, I'm beating a dead horse here. I keep telling you guys this. Um, but it's something that confused me a lot in the beginning. I thought the belts always just doubled, right? 60, 120, and then 240. That would make sense to me. No, let's go to 270. Why? Nobody knows. Okay, there we go. That's the bottom belt. That was the last one that was going to be fed. And now if we look down here, it's going to take a minute. Because don't forget that um, each of the modules overflow. They're not um, load balanced. So that means the first one is going to... Well, it's you guys know how overflow works. Oh, this is a beautiful sight. Look at this. Oh my god, so these screws. But again, don't forget that if you think about the rotor recipe. Um, I looked it up earlier. One rotor machine, one assembler to run at 100% to make four rotors a minute. Takes 100 screws a minute. So, and I definitely want to make more than four rotors a minute. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna use a lot of this stuff here. I'm, I'm gonna go bonkers upstairs as well. Well, this sucks. Um, when I was editing the clips that I had from recording, this one clip here where I showed you guys a couple of things that I added, um, I had audio, but there was no picture. It was black. I'm not sure what happened there, so sorry. I have to re-record this part again, but good news is I found a really cool mod. Um, I stumbled across it. Check it out. Bam. It's like the... Uh, my character right there. This is a spectator cam. That's like um, the same that they have in, what's the game called? Space Engineers. Where you can just pop out, you know, and you can look around and so on. And this is awesome. I like it because it doesn't give me an advantage of, you know, I cannot build while flying and so on. But it makes it really good for recording videos. So that is awesome. So let me show you guys real quick. Um, the assemblers on the top are all prepared. They're all set up. And so that's going to be the next clip after that. That's why you guys see some items already going up there. They're filling the conveyors and so on. But you guys see here, there is some of these advertisements. That's what I'm going to call them. They're really cool. It's from this Flaxit mod. Oh, I got both on the same side. But it doesn't matter. And they are pretty much just indicating whenever there is a storage box. Okay. Check it out, by the way. I got to show you guys this. This is so, so funny. I love the humor. It puts the pie in its face hole. It's from the farming mod. I can't wait for that to be updated. Boil them, smash them, stick them in a stew. And then, are you ready for this? <laughs> I like that little humor. I like it a lot. So, um, the way I've been doing it is when I am splitting out items. Okay, so upstairs for the reinforced plates, we actually need 180 iron plates. Okay. But each one of these modules here only makes 160. So I'm taking this whole box here and I'm splitting off 20. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm taking this whole box over there and I'm splitting off 20 right there. And that's so I don't have any problems in the future figuring out my logic behind this. I labeled everything where I'm doing this kind of stuff. So first we split it down here into two and then 80 of that go up into the merger there and the other 80 go through into the next splitter. I split it again into 40 going up which is now 120 belt and 40 going over here. And I split it again going up. And so down here, these 20 are merging up with this 160 belt to give us 180. And then down here for whatever else we needed. What's the key to go down? Oh, control. Okay. Um, 140 to be determined, right? I don't want to just send everything up there because when I can, I want to send the exact amounts that we need up there. And the other thing is when I did a bunch of math... I'm going to overlay a screenshot here real quick of a spreadsheet that I've been working on trying to figure out, you know, how many materials can I actually use and so on. I noticed that I needed to double my iron rods. So we had this little row over here uh, making 240 and I had to add another row. So now we're making 480 rods and half of that is going up. And then there's one more thing that I wanted to mention for some people that might have noticed it's upstairs here that's so cool that i can just fly up here 
and that is with the chitarium and the steel. I have a little bit of um, 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 a boo-boo, okay? I made this for a full 240 belt, 1200 quick wire. And, but I found out that we're actually only making 180 chitarium, okay? But it's fine. It's set up ready for the whole 1200. We, we only need 400 for this project today. So we're making plenty. Um, and as soon as we um, send the space elevator up and we have access to the next belts, then I can upgrade and power shard our Kyterium building over here. And then I can actually get the full 240 that I'm planning. Okay? So it's not wasted or anything. And then the other thing is, can I sprint in this camera view? No. Okay. Is that I did the two steel modules, the beams and the pipes with thinking that there's only 240 steel on the belt but these two belts are actually having 270 we're making 540 steel again um it's not a big problem because each one of these steel beams which is my bottleneck my biggest one we're only making 60 steel beams i could take 30 steel ingots from this belt for the um, pipes and another 30 from here and then make an additional 15 beams but that is not worth me shifting everything around and fixing this now um, because it's good for today and as soon as we have better belts we're gonna power shard everything that we can from the steel and upgrade the belts and then double ours so we're gonna make a thousand eighty and then i'll redo these two right here but this is really little i mean this i need so many steel beams for belts right now which is fine. So we got everything set up. And is there another one that I'm splitting out somewhere so I can show you another example? Mm, yeah, right here. But this is an easy one because I just need half a belt. Because upstairs for the statters, I need 320. So I'm taking this full box over here. And I'm splitting out 80 over there. Which is fine because I'm simply uh, splitting it into three. Right, 240 divided by 3 is 80. So we have 160 wire left over right here for another project, whatever we need. Okay, so and now escape and bam, I'm back in my body. How cool is this? I like this mod a lot. I'm I'm super happy that I found this. And then you guys also see I labeled um, all the different floors, show directly on the hyper tubes which one goes up and down. I don't know, just a little bit playful here, right? Trying to make it look nicer and more organized. Okay. I think now it's time to go upstairs and get to the assemblers. So in the last three days, guys, I have set up, I just counted it, uh, 214 assemblers. Uh, sorry, 214 constructors and 44 assemblers. And now belting up all just the assemblers here. Um, they were all set up. Uh, took me almost eight hours. Six hours and little breaks here and there. It came up to eight hours now. That was pretty crazy, um, especially it, it's ev almost every module. There is four modules that have four assemblers. Those were easy to set up, but then there's a bunch of oddballs that were that were much harder to set up. Okay, now this one here, this is making the what is this making again? The modular frames. This one is a little bit of an oddball because I did not split up here. This belt, the one on the top, is iron rods. Um, because I need 96. But this belt is 120. So this one I did not split. Um, or load balance I should say. This one is an overflow. right? Because I have a lot more than I actually need. So I just split those out. To make it a little bit easier. This one module here. Um, but if you just check overall. Oh, get up there. You know it, it's, it's pretty bananas. Because you just, you just run out of room. Granted if I was not such... Um, um specific i'm gonna say about you know having 90 degree turns and having everything as straight as possible then this would be a lot easier to set up but it also makes it a lot easier to troubleshoot and later on remember of why i set something up the way i did it right so um this right here is empty because this is going to be the reinforced iron plates that are coming from down there I think. No, from right here. Sorry, from right here. They're coming down here and going down the middle. And then I split over into the two areas. 
Um, the by far worst one was definitely the rotors right here. Um, I'm a little bit lucky. Uh, I can never remember where the ladder is to get up on these machines. There we go. Here we are. The up and down, man. I cannot wait for a jetpack. So the screws I showed you guys earlier um, are crazy. But then I had to result to come up over the machines itself to actually have enough room for the iron rods because this one was another, you know, I mean, look at this, just because I'm sending exact amount. I don't want to go with overflow on these. I want all these machines, all the assemblers everywhere besides the ones for the uh, modular frames. They're going to take maybe a minute or two to all run. Every other machine should kick in instantly full, right? Every one of them. So um, this one was by far the craziest. I mean, you guys see, I, I went extra two more foundations away from the wall and I still filled almost everything. And then, you know, with all these belts trying to run them around from all the different corners where they come up from downstairs, it, it was pretty hard getting everything to where it lines up. But I hope I have everything. And only when this runs will I figure out if it works. And every one of the storage boxes is set up already with the center output and the overflow. I don't have the overflow set up yet. I need to get some sleep. I want to kick this in. This is an example set up here for um, anything that is just four, right? This is super easy. I can replicate this many times. I left myself enough room. It's just mirrored pretty much top and bottom. And here, instead of making uh, whatever this input is, let's say this is going to be the status, whatever, okay? Instead of having them always on the left, I simply, because the splitter made it easier here, right? So this machine gets the status on the right, this one gets it on the left. It doesn't matter which input they get it, they're smart enough. Okay, so they're all connected. All I need to do is run one power cable down somewhere. How about right here? Oh, I'm nervous. Let's see if we have enough power. Oh my god. This is it. Kick this in. They're all going to start at the same time. All right, let's get up here so we can maybe see a lot of moving parts. Oh, I should have checked first. Let's check real quick. Oh, wow. I am surprised. Okay, it's still going up. 2,800. 23,000. Oh god, it keeps climbing. Okay, so we peaked at 3100 so far. Oh, it's going up. 3200. Uh, okay, I don't think it's going to peak up much higher. So we are good for now, which is good. I'm happy to see that. Ooh, I was so nervous about that. How, how much would that suck if I would have not had enough power? But now we see everything running from downstairs. All the machines must be running now because now I'm taking things out of the boxes. Over there we see the first statters. Let me, let me, let me down, let me down. Hey, hey, I know there's a ramp, but this is easy. <laughs> oh, look at them. They're coming quite quickly. And they are going to go on right here because I need them down the line. So this is the motors. Because motors need statters and rotors. There we go. Making motors. Wow. So this is an end product here. So they should be all coming out there. And they should start filling this box. Let's see. First motor. Come on. Why is this taking so long? There they are. Oh, is it because it's filling over here first? Where are they going? Hello? Oh, I forgot these splitters hold items. Oh, come on. How many? There we go. We got our first automated motors. Oh, yeah. Come on. There we go. Sweet. Now, let's uh, double check the other ones here. This is the AI limiters, which is nice because now I don't need to make those by hand anymore. They're not that bad, but it's still pain in the butt if you need them for all the smart splitters. And over here... That's why we didn't see them. Okay, that's the reinforced iron plate. But they are going straight up and over to over here. So this is going to take forever to fill. Because this all has to fill first. There's our uh, modular frames. Very nice. There's our rotors. Which are going into this chest. But then they're going all the way across over to the statters. 
Well, this is not bad. I mean, there's a bunch of them on the belt. I am making... 48 a minute. Yes. Yes, 48. Okay. What else? Did we forget anything else here? What do we have here? Uh, encased industrial beams. Okay, we're already up to 60. And then... There's the status again. So we just made a circle. Okay, cool. Sweet. I'm liking it. Now I am going to go uh, around the entire place here before I go to bed and make sure everything in the back is moving, right? So I don't have a like a dead um, lift or something because sometimes it happens when you when you have to replay things. So I just go around and like this one I see moving, I see this one moving, and so on. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna check all the belts and lifts. And for you guys, I'm going to cut over to a nice cinematic where I'm going to show all the different parts. And I'm also going to overlay the numbers in case you guys are interested um, of how much each module makes. And then the grand total in the end. Actually, before I get started with recording that cinematic part, I decided we are going to kick in these three assemblers right here to make our 100 automatic wiring. Um, I don't even have an output box for this because we're only going to make 100. So... It can just hold this right here. Then I set up two other boxes here. And I just wanted to show you guys this. If you wanted to only make 500 and actually tie it into your regular belts and whatever. You can just fill in a piece of concrete into each one of them. So it can hold 400 here. Plus the 100 in the machine. So you don't make more than you need it. Granted, a couple would be sitting on this conveyor belt. Um... But for me, it doesn't matter because I'm only giving it exactly the amount of items that it needs. I did the calculations here. Um, I think it takes 3,000 steel beams, um, 250 modular frames for this. Altogether, then this one here takes 250 reinforced, uh, sorry, 500 reinforced iron plates and 500 rotors, which are all sitting in here. Why did I give it double? Wait a second. Oh, because I went per minute, my calculation, instead of just the number. Okay. So we get to take out some stuff here. We only need 500. Otherwise, I'll make more than I need. And let's do the same here. So it actually doesn't take much to make this stuff here. And let's go ahead and kick this in. Each one of them so they can run. So at the end, after the cinematic, we can take these items and send our space elevator off.
I am loving this. This is the best thing today. It's this mod. Being able to fly around and show you guys things easier. Oh man, this is going to make it so much better to record. But I wanted to show you here real quick before we send our space elevator off. Where I'm getting the items out of the building, right? I did not want to run it through this floor up here. Because it is so crowded. In order to get over to that wall and run the elevator down, it would have been crazy. And that is why I decided to just come out over here. Um, you guys see the modular frames are already done. They're full. This second one up here is... Oh, check it out. We see one coming right now. Rotors. Because the motors are full. So now the rotors can come out and the statters. And also even some of the reinforced plates already. And of course the AI limiters. And they're all coming down the belt right there. Or the, the highway I should call it. And then over here we have the other two coming in. Actually, there is a I limiter uh, motors right here. You guys see because our storage box is already full. It has stopped moving. And then here we got the encased steel beams and it will be statters. There might be one or more trickling down. I'm not sure. I think the motor machines are still filling up. Yeah. And then so now over here we got our seven belts and then I'm just splitting out straight over into where the assigned storage boxes are yeah just like that and bam press escape and on top <laughs> ah that's where my character was sometimes you get real funny poses let's see if i can get one yeah there we go <laughs> i love it when you do it at the right time what actually happens though when we go back oh so you just fall from the sky that is so cool all right, so I brought everything up here in anticipation for that. Everything is there. I did not know that they only stack up to 50, by the way. So obviously the way I showed you with the chests down there, um, everything stopped halfway through because I needed to give it twice the, the space. How you doing, sir? So watch out. I'm going to shoot the needle up, okay? Don't get hurt. All right, let's do this. I am excited. It's been hundreds of hours. Well, not hundreds, but 100 hours. Okay, so can I actually just... Oh, you can just control click this. Bam, we're doing it. Seal it. Tier 5 and 6 coming. Uh, oil, truck, better conveyors, and all kinds of other surprises. Oh yeah, we're watching this. I mean, what? You see this four times or something per save game? See you later. I did try to go up there, by the way, once. You cannot stand on top of it. Um, there is a... Um, collision box around it and so on. So did this unlock already, or does it need to come back? No. Ada, you're not, you're not going to say anything? Blue? Maybe when it comes back down? I don't know. This is strange. It's such a big moment, and she's not saying a word. Ah, uh, there it goes. Oh, I just saw another light so white. Interesting. Okay. So, five and six. The only thing in tier three, by the way, that is the color gun. Um, I haven't unlocked that yet because we need computers... And we don't have those automated yet. I mean, I have them down in the box. I over, I think, a hundred and something computers from the crash ships. And then in tier zero, we just have the acrylic letters here. Cyrillic, sorry. And I, I, I don't have any use for them. So I have not unlocked them. So I don't have them in my build thing. All right, tier five, oil processing. Oh, by the way, today was update. I guess it's called 3.5. So we have the new packager. Let's see if it's maybe in here already. What is this? I've never seen this. Oh, that is for the space elevator. Okay. Probably the same as the modular engine. Truck manufacturer. There's the packager. That's new. And also the MK2 pipes and the valve. And so on. And then we can also make the gas mask, which is cool. 
And then tier 6. Fuel generator. Conveyors. Cute. <laughs> now we're getting the scanner update KTRM. I don't think so. Jetpack. The train. Monorail. Oh yeah. Oh, and then over here you guys see a little sneak peek of another mod I have installed. Oh yeah. There's MK2 pipes. And Hyper Booster MK2. Okay, and then the power suit is... It sounds interesting. I, I'm not a fan of that in, in the game. By the way, my inventory is empty because I, I left everything downstairs because I wanted to make sure I can pick all this up at once. That you can only wear the legs or the jetpack. And I don't know. I mean, we have a back and legs, right? We can't wear both of them at the same time. So that is why I got this right here. And that's going to take a lot more. We don't have circuit boards yet. This is kind of like from what I read in the description, like um, from Factorio. You know, where you can add things to, where you got the extra grid. And then we even got an MK2. And then there is a bunch of modules for it. So we're going to have to check here. Oh, we get an hand slot. Nice. Okay, so, well, I'm not going to unlock anything yet. I do want to check out um, in the equipment workbench real quick. Now that... Whoa. Oh, auto-saving. Wow, okay, that scared me. I want to check in the equipment workbench here real quick if there's any of these modules for this power suit or if I need to unlock that still. No, okay. And another thing is that I want to get to... I'm going to see what I can do... It's not here. Boo. Where is this? Oh yeah, of course, under sulfur. What's this here? Radio signal. Okay. I want to unlock the rifle. So I'm going to build these hundred circuit boards or whatever that is. Oh, we need rubber for the rifle cartridges. Never mind. So because the thing is that before we actually go crazy with oil, which... You guys have no idea what's waiting there. Um, I do want to do an episode where we are going to explore and try to get our hands on a lot of hard drives. Because I want to do alternate research or alternate recipe research in the, uh, in the MAM here. So I think next episode that's what we're going to do. I'm going to prepare a bunch of stuff for that. And then we are probably going to go up here. I think in this area there's a bunch of oil. And we're just going to set up like a temporary oil setup just so I can get plastic and rubber so I can craft the things that I need for the research, for the rifle, and then also probably the jetpack. Um, oh, we cannot craft. Any well, yeah, of course, the, the rubber and the plastic comes from the refineries. Duh. Okay. Anyways, I'm rambling over here. I am super excited, guys. It has been almost five days for me to record this episode. Um... Close to 40 hours. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I have a blast making it. I'm loving this game. And so I think I am going to go ahead and... Because I have the materials for all of this stuff here now, right? They're all automated. Well, this one we don't, but... So I'm going to go ahead and do this one first. So we can, beginning of next episode, head over there. And set up, like I said, temporary oil to get the things here. So I can unlock the next thing. Which, I don't see any problem with that. And of course, I want to get into... Uh, where is it? Tier 6. Into monorail ASAP. Um, because everything outside of the grasslands, don't forget, is going to be via train. So, we're, let's say, as an example, if we get something from oh, over here. Right? From the oil. If we, if we either bring the oil back here or we bring in the plastic and the rubber back here, it needs to be via train. And there is still lots of map left. I think it goes all the way to at least up here. There's a big desert up there. Then in the middle, of course, we have the jungle where we were in season one. Oh, and then the the, the spider um, biome, I think, is up there. So there is so much for us to explore. But I already said it once. I am rambling over here. I am dead tired. I need to go to sleep. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. And... I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Stay safe. And bye-bye.